Hello lovely internet strangers. Today's video is a requested video and also one that I have talked about making for a long time. This will be the first video in a series of I don't know how many videos where I will talk about the concept of Latin X. I will put the word on the screen so you can see how it is spelled. The pronunciation of this term is one of the many things that I will discuss in my series on Latin X. As you can hear, I choose to pronounce it Latin X because the first time I saw it, that's how I pronounced it in my head and it sounded like some kind of new Latin superhero, Latinx, and that's just how I've always chosen to pronounce it. I don't really care because I think it's a silly term and we're gonna get into that. This video has taken me a while to get to and it took me a while to script. Even now I'm still kind of going off the cuff and I'm not sure how it's all gonna turn out because there is so much context around the term Latinx, where it came from, why people want to use it, why people don't want to use it, the other terms that exist, Latino, Hispanic, the alternatives to Latinx, like Latinx, and I kind of need to talk about my own identity and relationship to it and explain why this topic is so complex. So I may not talk about this in any order that makes sense, but hopefully you will come along with me and understand a little bit more than you did before you watch this video. Okay, let's get started. First, let's talk about what the term Latinx is and its origins. If you pronounce it differently, insert your own pronunciation here. I'm calling it Latinx. Deal with it. So Latinx emerged as an alternative to Latino, and I will get into the difference between Latino and Hispanic later and the emergence of the term Latino. But for now, all you need to know is that Latino is an adjective that describes people from Latin American countries. English speaking people use this word, but in Spanish, because Spanish is a gendered language, basically the way it works is that the masculine is the neutral form as well as the masculine form. And when you are referring specifically to a female or a group of only females, you will use the feminine form. So I would describe myself as Latino. Latina, a man would describe himself as Latino. If I was talking about a group of women of Latin American origin, I would refer to them as Latinas. And if I was referring to a mixed gender group, I would refer to them as Latinos. And more generally, people say things like the Latino community. So Latinx emerged for two basic reasons. One, as a rejection of the masculine as being the neutral form, as being the default. So this largely came from a feminist perspective. The second reason Latinx emerged as an alternative to Latino is because of the rejection of the gender binary. It became an attempt to be more inclusive of people who reject male and female as their gender. So the O in Latino gets replaced with an X. I will get into the linguistic problems with that in a bit, but first let me give just a little bit of a timeline of its usage. The term was first seen online around 2004 and didn't really reemerge until about 10 years later. So around 2014, which was really when the intersectional social justice movement kicked off online. It's been most heavily used in academic contexts, whether by scholars or by students at universities and activists in the social justice, gender identity space. I think you can see usages of the term really starting at the universities. My university has a Latinx graduation now. It didn't happen until after I left, but it's been around for a while now. And the organization is not a Latino heritage organization. It's now a Latinx group on campus. And I found a Huffington Post article that mentioned that Oberlin College has a Latinx Heritage Month, New York University has a Latinx graduation, Central Washington University has a Latinx Alumni Association reception. And those are just a few examples. I know now that in 2021, this is more widespread than ever at universities. And then there was an NBC article in 2017 talking about how the term had been popping up in mainstream outlets like the New York Times, the Washington Post, USA Today, and becoming more visible in Hispanic media. And then USA Today in June 2019, wrote about how Elizabeth Warren used Latin X in her opening remarks during the first democratic debate and that it was one of the highest profile uses of the term since its conception and probably the first time that many people had heard the term and that it probably wouldn't be the last because the candidates were attempting to target young progressive voters in their campaigns. And yes, this term is much more commonly used in the younger progressive leaning female demographic in particular. The term Latin X was added to Merriam-Webster in September 2018 and it was added to to the Oxford English Dictionary in March 2019. So it is legit now. It is in both of the most popular dictionaries. Okay, let's talk about the pronunciation and a couple of the alternatives to Latinx. So before Latinx, there was another term and I will put it on screen because it emerged as a written term and there's no set way to pronounce it. If you're just listening to this video, it's Latin at sign because the at sign includes both the A and the O. 
So it encompasses both. Some people said you could pronounce this at sign as ow, like Latinao, but it's not a term where a lot of thought was given into how to pronounce it. It emerged in the internet age and never really caught on and never really could catch on because we need terms that can be used in the spoken language. And another reason that Latinao never really caught on for the people who want this alternative, especially in current year, is that it still reinforces the gender binary. Yes, it's including the A and the O, it's including the masculine and the feminine together to make a neutral form, but what about people that reject this binary altogether? So that's not going to work. What are the alternatives? The main alternative to Latinx is Latine. I've seen it written with an accent over the E and without. This term has been used for a while. It has not gained the kind of popularity that Latinx has, at least in the United States. From what I could tell from my research, it's used more in Latin American countries by Spanish speakers because it makes sense grammatically. You're replacing the vowel with another vowel. And E is a letter that is often used in words that are gender neutral, like estudiante, which means student. And you would use estudiante to describe a male or a female student versus a word like professor, where you would say el profesor, la profesora, to indicate the gender of the professor. So how do you pronounce Latinx? Because my pronunciation is not the most popular one, I don't think, although it is one of the ones that I came across. There's a lot of confusion over how to pronounce this term. Some scholars have argued that the term is virtually unpopular pronounceable in Spanish. Merriam-Webster says that you pronounce it the same way you would pronounce Latina or Latino, but replace the X. So Latinx, which kind of sounds like Kleenex, but whatever. A Huffington Post article in 2016 says you should pronounce it Latinx. And other pronunciations I came across were Latinx, Latinx, and then in Spanish, Latinx, because X is how you say X in Spanish, or Latin sh, which Okay. Important note, in 2018, the Royal Spanish Academy rejected the use of X and E as gender neutral alternatives to the collective masculine O ending in their style manual, which they published with the Asociación de Academias de la Lengua Española. My Spanish accent is not that great. Sorry. What they said about the decision was that we're confusing grammar with machismo. So now I'll get a little bit deeper into the linguistic arguments against using this term and how people respond to those arguments. So some people say, hey, Spanish is our language. It is the way it is. It's a gendered language. Deal with it. We have this gender neutral ending, which is the O. Yes, it is also the masculine, but it is also the neutral. Everyone understands this. Deal with it. And then if you're trying to change it, then you're trying to change Spanish. And it's something that's being imposed from top down. You're not respecting the language. Latinx cannot be pronounced easily by Spanish speakers. It's confusing. Some people even say that it eliminates the nuance or diversity in the way that you can refer to people because people like to switch back and forth to refer to specific individuals and also that feminists had actually fought for the term Latina to be used more and so this is an erasure of being able to be referred to as Latina versus Latino and have their gender acknowledged. That's just a quick note I came across. I'm not well versed in the history of feminist movements in Latin America although maybe it's something that I could research more at some point. So a term that you'll see thrown around is linguistic linguistic imperialism. And one of my favorite parts of this debate in the Latino community is that some people say it's linguistic imperialism to impose the term Latinx because you're trying to mess with Spanish as it exists. And then some people say that, well, Spanish is the language of the imperialists. It was the language of the conquistadors. So we're essentially just rolling back the imperialist damage that was done before and trying to hearken back to the indigenous language Languages, though I don't know enough about indigenous languages to know if they would have used the X in that position because yes, we use the letter X in Spanish and I even know that some indigenous languages do use the X but they're next to vowels generally, whether it's Mexico or a lot of the Aztec words that would start with X but were followed by vowels. I haven't really seen a lot of indigenous words where the X is followed by a consonant but regardless, that's not the way Spanish operates currently so it is confusing to Spanish speakers. So many people will say that this is just a buzzword that doesn't really address any of the systemic problems with the language in any meaningful way. And then the people that are pro will say Latinx is not a buzzword. You're just saying that because you don't really want to make our language and our culture more inclusive. And this is an argument that privileged people make to resist progressive structural change. There's an article that was written in 2015 in the college newspaper at Swarthmore that was arguing against 
hence the use of Latinx. And the article was written by Latinos. And then the website Latino Rebels did a response critiquing their arguments. And I read not only the articles, but also the comment section on the Latino Rebels article. And people were still commenting on that article through current year. So it was really interesting and helped me kind of identify a lot of the points that I needed to address in my videos. So in the article on Latino Rebels, they said, can we really be comfortable implying that we should continue to marginalize sections of our people while we figure out a way to stop doing it in a manner that is really meaningful? Without a commitment to liberation and solidarity, why would someone who holds gender privilege due to their gender identity and or conformity shift the way they speak, read, or think if it is not useful for them? Privilege affords us a blind spot to those who are oppressed and while marginalized by our linguistic practices allows us to argue that our inconvenience is more important than their suffering. As you can see, this is a very academic, activisty way of thinking. I'm not opposed to thinking through a gender neutral term that is different than the masculine as default. But to make this huge stink about the low percentage of people in our society that don't fit into Latino or Latina being oppressed by linguistic practices, dude, simmer down, look around you. Most people are really chill about this or they find reasonable ways to deal with it or get around it. If I was gonna talk about oppression for people in the Latino community, this would not be something that's high on my list. Some people say that Latinx is mostly something that is used in the United States. So you're forcing the ideals of the United States on the Spanish language in a way that doesn't respect its grammar. Then other people come back and as I said, say that Spanish itself is linguistic imperialism, forced on the indigenous people by the conquistador and so by making that argument, they're actually erasing indigenous history and its cultural legacy. And the Latino Rebels article says that the reality of people that have been colonized, including that of the authors of the Swarthmore piece and ourselves, is marked by multiple paradoxes, including the very paradox that language can act simultaneously as oppressor and liberator. Part of our process of colonization implies that we have internalized the power dichotomies of the oppressor. That's a mouthful, which is actually what a lot of people say about the term Latinx that it's a mouthful. It's hard to pronounce and it makes discourse difficult. The Latino Rebels article makes the point that actually a lot of people in Latin American countries do use this term, do a Google search, and you'll find that information. And the long and short of it is that the community, such as it is, is incredibly divided on this issue. There was someone commenting in 2020 on this article, I can agree with every other person who says Latinx should not be used. This comes from people who don't know much of Spanish culture. Most who are Americans are not Spanish speakers. I'm not saying you guys are wrong. I respect your opinions. The thing I feel that is happening is that we as Spanish speakers are being taken down. The people are trying to change our language and they don't even own it. But people will make the counter argument that languages are living, they change over time, that the term Latino is relatively recent historically, and that the older generation initially rejected labels like Latino, and that Mexican Americans rejected the term Chicano being used by the younger generations. There was a Chronicle article from 2018 that said that indeed at some point in human history there were no words. Now there are words. Someone invented them. This process continues. I'm going to end there, but don't worry. I'm going to keep talking about this topic in another video. So stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.